Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents an American light opera by Lawrence and Lee. Roaring Camp, a tale of the American West, set to the great music of Bourgeois, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another exciting drama with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bret Hart gave us the inspiration for tonight's Railroad Hour, and Anton Dvorak provides the music that Dorothy Warren Schultz and I will sing in the next half hour. And here's Roaring Camp. Gold! Gold up in the Sierras! Gold! A hundred years ago, that cry of gold went up in California. And a hundred thousand men pulled up stakes and started the rush westward. Look, there's a 49er climbing up the high ground with his Conestoga wagon and his Pinto pony. Making the long trip west. The prairie, cross the great divide. Go on to California. Westward, pinned by my side, with my covered wagon, rolling and swinging and creaking and singing of California. Gonna stake my claim, take a gambler's chances, playing the prospector's game. To the westward pole, we're ready to go. To the westward pole. What's so funny, ma'am? Well, if you expect your horses to be watered, you'd better see to it yourself. Even the stable boy has run off to the hills to look for gold. Am I coming into the gold country? It's in the ruin of this town. Oh, how come? When the gold strike came, every honest business in Poker Flat went out the window, and the law is something you read about in books. Yeah, sounds like my kind of country. But I didn't expect to find women folks out here. Not pretty ones, at any rate. Well, I came out here three years ago with my father from Boston. Boston, huh? That's what they call me. Boston Wagner. You don't talk like a New Englander. Well, they call me Boston because that's the only town in the USA I ain't never seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd like to meet your dad and your family. Want to make some friends out here. I'm afraid that won't be possible. You see, my father died last month in a gunfight. I'm sorry to hear that. Terribly lonesome without him and so far away from everything I used to know. I understand. Something that will love. Oh, 
searching for, miss. It's hard and it's yellow. And I've come 2,000 miles to find it. And it won't make you happy. <laughs> It'll help. It obliges me, ma'am, if you tell me which road leads to Rowan Camp. Lord, you're not going there. Well, they told me it was the richest gold country in the mother load. Nuggets the size of a man's fist. Oh, please. Please don't go. Thanks for the advice, ma'am. I don't scare easy. You mean you're going to Roaring Camp anyway? That's right, miss. But don't make any bets about me coming out feet first. You'll see me again, ma'am, and often. Dead in this town? You got a sign back there, Roaring Camp. Strangers keep out. Well, I'm a stranger. What are you going to do about it? Everybody seems to be asleep. Well, I'll wake him up. Hey! Kill that noise! Yeah, got to keep things quiet around here. Why? What's the trouble? What's going on? Reckon you're a stranger to Roan Camp. That's right. We don't much like strangers. Well, I didn't come here to be liked. You got any money? I'll have more when I leave. I'll give you six to five. It's a boy. I don't follow you, mister. Well, uh, you see that cabin down in the hollow? That's Cherokee South, Captain. She's having herself a baby. A baby? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't it the doggone thing? <laughs> a baby getting herself born at Roan Camp. <laughs> now, who's taking care of the mother? Nobody. She's all alone in there? Ain't no other woman folk in town. Well, I'll get a woman to come up here. I doubt that. Not to Roaring Camp. Oh, I'll find somebody. If you'll guarantee her a safe conduct. I'll give you a gambler's word. That's good enough. And you gotta let me stake my claim and take my diggings. No better. No worse than any other miner in the camp. How about it? What do you say, Kane Tuck? Well, uh, if you'll get us a woman to care for Sal. Here's my hand on it. I'll be back by midnight. You grab the horse, Kane Tuck. I'll help the lady. Hold! Hold, boy! Hold there! I got him! I got him! Well, what must I do? Men, this is Miss Elvira Brigham. You gotta mind her as if she was a federal marshal. The woman's in the cabin. Go help her. Well, I need water. Hot water and, and towels. Oh, towels? What's them? You know, Kentuck. Hand wiping rag. Oh, oh, why, sure. I'll get the wound from the tavern. They have to be clean towels, Kentuck. No time to waste. Sal needs help mighty bad. <laughs> That's the baby. Uh, how about it, men? Three cheers for the baby. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Quiet, all of you. What 
you think uh, this uh, is a county fair or, or a prize well, fight? Well, well ma'am. It's sorry, ma'am, on account of the baby coming with... I guess we just lost our head. Is it a boy or a girl? A boy. Well, I knowed it would be. Now, pay up, Tempton. You owe me an ounce of gold. Uh. <laughs> what language is uh, for your men to respect the dead? Uh, it... The dead? Baby. Oh, the baby's fine. But Cherokee, Sal... Who is Sal? Now I want all of you to get out of here and go to your cabins and be quiet. Yeah, yes, ma'am. So the baby can get some sleep. Come on, boys. I'm off. Let's do what Miss Brigham says. in a moment for Act Two of Roaring Camp. It's early dawn of a summer morning in the lovely Catskill Mountains of New York State. A peaceful and pretty sight. At least it seems so to engineer Clark Bonesteel from the cab of his two-unit diesel engine, which is pulling a 70-car freight train through the quiet valley. When the town fire siren located in the firehouse right next door to the chief's house answered with its own scream of warning, Engineer Bonesteel, knowing his job was done, picked up speed and went about his regular business of delivering the nation's freight. Engineer Bonesteel was credited by the town fire chief with saving literally hundreds of lives by his quick and resourceful actions in getting the guests out of the hotel, which was destroyed in the million-dollar fire. And Engineer Bone Steel is just one of many thousands of railroad people who night and day, month in and month out in every part of the country, make it their business to be of the greatest possible service to the communities and customers they serve. <laughs> Is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee light opera version of Bret Hart's Roaring Camp, set to the music of Borjak and starring Gordon McRae with his guest Dorothy Warren show. Go to sleep, go to sleep, baby, go to
did you ever see such a heavenly face? You know, some of the boys wondered if they could come in and sort of take a look at him. Oh, they're so rough and rowdy. Oh, I'll make them toe the line. Well, when you get them all here, there's a speech I want to make to them. Citizens of Rowan Camp, <clears throat> I think we all owe a debt of gratitude to Miss Elvira Brigham for taking care of the baby. Men, do you expect me to stay here in Roaring Camp? Can't take care of the baby without you. Then we'll have to make some changes around here. You, with that chaw tobacco, what's your name? Well, they call me Kane Tuck. When was the last time you changed that shirt? Well, uh... I ain't kept track sometime in the late fall, I reckon. <laughs> what year, Kane Tuck? <laughs> you listen to me, Kane Tuck. Anytime you want to see the baby, you've got to hustle out a clean shirt. A clean shirt? Mm. And what's your name? You don't look like a mining man. Well, I'm of the gambling profession, ma'am. They call me Gentleman John Oka. Is that a diamond stick pin in your tie? Three carats, ma'am, without a flaw. Many have admired it, ma'am. You can still admire it, Mr. Oakhurst, but it belongs to the baby now. What? <laughs> Every man in Roaring Camp has to contribute something to the support of the baby. How about it? Well, I'll give a pound of gold dust, ma'am. I'll throw in my pearl-handled downages. Or he can have my gold watch that chimes the hour. Well, uh, the stick pin you admired, ma'am, is paste. Uh, may I offer you this diamond ring worth $2,000? I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Oakhurst. Now, if we'll all form a single line, you may file into the cabin one at a time to see the baby. Mr. Kane Tuck, you will be the first. Oh, well, doggone if I ain't excited now. Now, come on with me. <laughs> be that he? That's the baby. Well, not much besides, huh? <laughs> He more got the color, has he? Gotcha, 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 Hey, look at that. He wrestled with my finger, the doggone little critter. He wrestled with my finger. It's man o jack. Hey, man, big news. What's all the excitement? I just come from the dry fork. The old claim we thought was run out. It's full of gold, boy. Oh, no. Hear that? Is right. rain in oh, yeah. the mother load, a fortune and ever spade full of dirt. Oh, I tell you, boys, the luck is with us. I'm going now. I suppose you're no longer interested in the child. Hey, child? What child? A passing novelty. A baby boy, that's all. Well, ain't that a wonder now? What do you call him? Well, we ain't given him a name yet. Say, man, I got an idea. Listen, lads, I have a name to give the boy. He brought the joy of better luck to Roaring Camp. Listen, dads, here is a name to give the lad. We'll call him Luck, for he's the luck of Roaring Camp. Don't deny, gentlemen, you and I, struck it with out of a baby cry. Thank the Lord. Mountains and the sky that we can try to give the luck a better life than you and I. Here's a toast, gentlemen, we can boast. He's the most beautiful baby boy on the coast. Thank the Lord, Lord of the mountains and the sky. A first name. Oh, Tommy then. We'll call him Tommy Luck of Warren Camp. You know.
know it makes a fella feel kind of strange. Why, Boston? Well, this isn't quite my line exactly, shopping for baby clothes. Oh, it's sweet of you to drive me to Sacramento. Do you like this little flowered bonnet, Boston? Oh, sure, sure. It's pretty fancy for the luck, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's not for the baby. It's for me. Oh. Look, Miss Elvira, let me buy it for you. I wish I could buy you everything in this store, everything in Sacramento. Out there. I don't know. I'll find out. Hey, you hear about the flood? Flood? Where? Up in the gold country. Quick for the Sierras. Poker Flat, Red Dog, all of them towns under six feet of water. What about Roaring Camp? It must be near washed away by now. No. Now, Ira, you stay here. I'll ride back fast as I can. Stay there, Boston. Don't try to swim for it. We'll pick you up in the boat. I'll pull you up in the boat, Boston. There. What's happened to Ron Camp? Gone. I've been rowing around trying to pick up survivors. The luck, O'Christ. What happened to the luck? There. The bottom of the boat. Why, this cane tuck and the baby. They are. Licked to both of them a few minutes ago. They've been in the water for hours, clinging to a tree stone. Cane tuck? <laughs> the doggone little, little critter. He, he wouldn't wrestle with, with my fingers. The baby's dead, cane tuck. Uh. I'm dying, too. Ain't that, boy? Now, lie back, King Tuck. Man, the, the luck's taking me with him. I'm gone with the luck. I... Mighty strange, Miss Elvira. I'd like to think maybe the luck came into the world to help us find each other. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. There'll be another luck someday, Miss Elvira. Only that he won't belong to Roaring Camp. But I hope he'll just belong to us, Miss Elvira. Sharpest loss in time, and the pain becomes a distant pantomime. The hurt may heal with all the scars, and what we were is lost in what we are.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Dorothy Warren show. We'll be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Ted DeCorsia, Peter Leeds, Marion Richmond, Marvin Miller, and to our entire company. Roaring Camp, suggested by the Bret Hart story, was set to music, adapted to themes from Dvorak's New World Symphony, with lyrics and libretto by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? America, with its vast distances and huge productive capacities, has always depended on railroads to take care of most of its transportation. And that will continue to be true as far ahead as we can see. The railroads will never stand still in a nation of growing population and growing economic activity. As America moves ahead, so will the railroads, steadily enlarging their capacity to meet increasing demands for service and steadily increasing their efficiency of operation to cope with constantly rising costs of doing business. Thank you, Marvin. Tell me, Gordon, what's on the show train next Monday night? Uh, Dorothy, it's a story of the gay 90s with music like this. And the story is called Hope is a Woman. Well, I'll get into my bustle and meet you here next Monday. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. As always, you were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and the world premiere of Hope is a Woman, on behalf of the other members of the cast and the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying Good night. <laughs> McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' The Desert Song in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now, stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The Voice of Firestone features Mildred Miller on NBC.